Okay, today in this problem, we're gonna take a look at an inclined plane. And we're gonna use two identical boxes. Uh, one box we're gonna push up this inclined plane. The other box we're simply going to lift vertically. And what I wanna do is compare the forces required to lift this box up along this inclined plane and this box simply vertically. Uh, and that should allow us to solve for things like IMA and AMA for this inclined plane which is of course a simple machine. So the first thing we're gonna do is take a look at this box right here. Uh, this box, we're just gonna lift it straight upward. Now we know if this is a 50 pound box, it's going to take 50 pounds of force to lift the box upward. And we're gonna lift this box upward two feet so that it finishes right up here. So the work required to lift this box where work is given by force times displacement times the cosine of the angle between these, these two vectors. Work will be the force, that's 50 pounds, multiplied by the displacement, that's two feet, times the cosine of the angle between them. We realize the displacement is straight upward and the force is straight upward. So really what we have here is the cosine of zero. This is gonna work out, <laughs> work out to be a work of 100, that's foot pounds. Foot pounds being the units of work in this problem. Now I know the end goal here is to solve for the IMA of this inclined plane. And of course, to figure out the force with which we're gonna to have to push on this box up the hill. But we actually need these values here first. Now, in order to find the force that we have to push on this block with up the hill, uh, there's a couple things we need to know about this ramp. And largely we need to understand the efficiency of the ramp. So in this problem, we're gonna go through and we're gonna say that this ramp is 100% efficient. Knowing the ramp is 100% efficient, now we can go through and start to apply some of the other equations that we've used on other simple machines to this inclined plane. Uh, the first thing I want to look at is IMA, or Ideal Mechanical Advantage. We know Ideal Mechanical Advantage is given by displacement in over displacement out. Now, in this problem, we really have two boxes, but we have the same effective situation in both cases. We're taking a box from ground level and lifting it up two feet. They're both going to finish up over here. So we've already lifted this box. This box is gonna do the same thing. Now I know it's traveling horizontally, uh, but that actually doesn't require any work. It's really just the vertical movement that requires work for both of these boxes. So I'm pushing this box five feet along this ramp or the hypotenuse of this triangle. Effectively what we're doing is we're pushing this box along an input distance. And the output is the vertical change. So the IMA in this problem is going to be the displacement in, that's five feet, which we push this box over the actual vertical displacement of this box, that's two feet. And we find that the IMA is 2.5. And remember, IMA is unitless, and that's because we've got feet over feet here, uh, and so we wind up with IMA of 2.5. Now, because this is 100% efficient, that makes our life a little bit easy. Uh, anytime we've got 100% efficiency, we can say the ideal mechanical advantage is equal to the actual mechanical advantage. And that's important for us because if we want to solve for this force right here, we have to deal with actual mechanical advantage. The reason being, actual mechanical advantage is force out over force in. Ideal mechanical advantage is based on displacements. Actual mechanical advantage is based on forces. So if we're trying to solve for a force, we obviously have to deal with actual mechanical advantage. Now, we already know the force out, or the output force, that is this 50 pounds over here. We're gonna divide this by our force in. Realize the IMA equals AMA. So what this leaves us with is the IMA, which we already know of 2.5, has to be equal to our 50 pounds of output force over our input force. And we find that the input force, F in, is equal to 
20 pounds. So if we want to push this box up this ramp, we're going to have to push with a force of 20 pounds. And you'll notice if we go back to work and our work equation, if we push with a force of 20 pounds over a displacement of 5 feet, we'll have in fact done 100 foot-pounds of work. Just the same as if we'd simply lifted this box 2 feet. Now, let's make this a little bit more realistic. Let's say that this ramp has a little bit of friction on it, so it's not 100% efficient. As we push the block up the hill, we lose some energy to friction. So let's say this is only going to be about 90% efficient. If this ramp is only 90% efficient, certain things are gonna change. Now, one thing that is not gonna change is the IMA. Remember, IMA is based on displacements. And if I push this block up this hill, regardless of how much friction there is, the block's gonna move five feet along this ramp. And it's going to gain two feet vertically worth of height. So the IMA, just like it was when it was 100% efficient, is going to be 2.5. That is unaffected in this problem. By having some friction in this problem, the IMA doesn't change. What does change though, is going to be AMA. Because this is only 90% efficient, I cannot say the ideal mechanical advantage equals the actual mechanical advantage. So I have to back up a little ways to our equation relating IMA, AMA, and percent efficiency. And you'll remember, percent efficiency equals actual mechanical advantage over ideal mechanical advantage. So substituting in 90% efficiency as a decimal, don't plug in 90 here, it's 0.9, that needs to equal the actual mechanical advantage over the ideal mechanical advantage of 2.5. And we find the actual mechanical advantage is 2.25. So not all that grossly different from 2.5, the IMA, but this is a different outcome here. Obviously 2.5 and 2.25 aren't the same. Uh, so now solving for our input force, just like we did over here, we're going to have our output force of 50 pounds. The output hasn't changed in this situation. We're still effectively trying to lift a 50 pound box. That's what we're trying to really avoid having to do by pushing this block up the hill. But that's our output uh, over our input, F in, which we're trying to solve for. So plugging numbers in here, we've got 50 pounds over our force in. And if you do the math on this, you'll find the force in equals 22.2 repeating pounds. And I'll let you take sig figs with that as, as far as you want. I don't want to get caught up in that right now. Uh, but what we see here, of course, is in a situation where there's friction or the system is less efficient, we have to push harder on this box in order to get it to go up the hill. And ultimately, we wind up doing more work in pushing the box up the hill. If you look at this, going back to our equation for work, uh, force of 22.2 pounds acting over five feet is going to do more than 100 foot-pounds worth of work. And so what we've seen here is how to apply work to a inclined plane. We've seen how to calculate both IMA and AMA for an inclined plane. And we've looked at how to take one known force and, and use it to solve for the other force. And we've done that in both a 100% efficient situation as well as a situation where the incline plane wasn't entirely efficient. And on that note, that's all for now.